Hey guys, this is a med pouch that I put together. Uh, I have one inside my patrol bag. I also keep one inside my POV. It's a bag that I got on Amazon. It was less than $20. I don't recall the name brand of it. I just searched medical, tactical medical pouch and I saw this one, it was less than 20 bucks. It's the standard canvas type material. There's molly in the front molly in the back you have your strap two straps here so you could attach to a another backpack or another tactical bag or whatnot it's about eight inches long five inches wide i kind of packed it so it's about six inches in depth i don't think i could put some more stuff in here on the top here i have a carabiner it's always good to have an extra carabiner that i attach to the zippers and right here is a small night eyes night lit um, I keep this on so uh, if I'm working with a patient at night, I can click it once, it stays on, click it twice, you know, it kind of blinks for like an SOS emergency uh, so people can see us at night from uh, far away and get some help out to us. Okay, now before I go further, I just want to put a disclaimer out there. I am not a medic. I am not a medic. Just the simple stuff that you learn in the military and also in law enforcement. That's it. So remember, the first thing you want to do prior to working on a, on your patient or working on a, somebody that needs assistance is you want to make sure that the scene is safe. You want to make sure that whoever you're working on, whatever caused that incident, that there's not going to be a danger to you. So if there's a threat out there, you want to make sure that threat is taken care of prior to you working on that individual, right? So I like to keep things nice, neat, and organized. So. When you open up your, when I open up my bag here, I open up like this and it kind of, everything falls into place here. Like you, as you can see here, I have a headlamp here. If you're working at night, you want to be hands free, right? You don't want to be fumbling around with a flashlight or anything. So I got a good head, headlamp right here. That's actually a, a, a cheap one. I'm not so sure I bought it at Home Depot. So, but it's good to go. Uh, safety's first. You always want to make sure that you have some gloves. I got the gloves easily accessible in the front. You want to make sure you put on your gloves first before you work on a, a patient, right? Uh, in the event that you need to cut some uh, clothing or uh, stuff, I have some trauma shears. These are the Leatherman Raptors. This is an awesome, awesome set of trauma shears. It has a, a ring cutter right here. You know, the shears are extremely powerful. I've seen demonstrations on YouTube where they're cutting through jeans thick clothing even some through like tin and some other uh thin metal and stuff my gosh these these scissors are these shears are awesome um it also has a um it has a seat belt cutter right here or a strap cutter and an oxygen valve wrench right here so this is an awesome little tool plus it has a carb carbine uh, glass breaker this tool itself, oh my gosh, this is probably the, my most favorite thing in the kit right here. It's called the Leatherman Raptor. Awesome for um, EMTs and tactical medics or uh, first responders. Good little tool right there. I also have hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is good to clean dirty wounds. Now, it's good to use a hydrogen peroxide on the first time if you're cleaning a dirty wound, but after you put the dressing on and you're gonna reapply a dressing or something, uh, it's not good to keep putting hydrogen peroxide because although it kills bacteria and germs, it also kills the good cells that are trying to heal your wounds. Okay, so hydrogen peroxide, good for dirty wounds. Over here, I have medical tape. I pre-folded my med tape so it's easy to find uh, the ends. You don't want to be fumbling around in a high stressful situation and you can't find the end of the tape. So I just put a little... Uh, fold here so I can find my my the end of my med tape over here. I have some compressed gauze some H and H compressed gauze This thing is good, but before you anything like anything that you put in your med pack You want to research on what these items are how you're going to use these items Okay, this gauze is uh, you, you you pull it out and in the event that you have uh, some kind of Puncture or bullet wound or whatnot you, you get the end of it You wrap it up in a bowl and you start packing it into the, into the wound and keep packing it and packing it and packing it and then you get a, a trauma bandage and you wrap around it. Uh, trauma bandage as of something like this. I have two sets here. Okay. These are two trauma bandages. Okay. Emergency trauma bandages. 
you get the you open it up it's sterile right now cut it open put the the bandage portion over the 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 compressed gauze if there's a punctured in the wound you wrap it around wrap it around and then just follow the instructions on the bat pretty self-explanatory I also have a, a set of quick clot combat gauze same thing as the H and H compressed gauze but it's quick clot it has um, a blood clotting agent so it'll help uh, stop the bleeding a, a lot faster the same thing with this you 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 take it out and you start packing it inside the, the wound itself packing it inside the the puncture the bullet hole and it, you know and then after you do this put a trauma bandage on it okay I also have here a triangle bandage you could use this as an actual dressing if you, somebody has a wound you could put it right on top of the wound and then you could wrap it with medical tape or you could put the trauma bandage on it you could also use this in multiple uses for uh, a triangle bandage if somebody hurts his arm like you see in the movies you could wrap it up like that there's a lot of tutorials on how to use a triangle bandage on on YouTube and whatnot over here I have an NPA nasal pharyngeal airway or a nose hose this is an event that the, your patient has a hard time breathing he's unconscious a lot of the times it's the, the person's tongue that's causing an obstruction and the person can't breathe there's an actual way there's a bevel portion on the end of this um, of the hose there's a certain way that you got to put it into the, the nostril usually put it into the right nostril in the event that a person has some trauma or a puncture from his neck to the abdomen we have um, chest seals this is the halo chest seals there's two inside this pack what you want to do is you want to open it and um, where the hole is on the person's chest if it's possible to clean it and dry it as, as to the best of your ability and slap those those seals on okay if there's an exit wound from like a gunshot on the person's back there's two slap it on the person's back there's tutorials on YouTube again on how to use this always go, go back to your tutorials and go back to your training I have a cam light in here just because if I like uh, like again if we're working on night crank it up uh, start flagging it down and you know you could use it to attract somebody a tourniquet tourniquets always used as a last resort okay know how and when to use a tourniquet okay um it's for severe uh severe tra uh, traumatic bleeding is when you want to actually use a the tourniquet okay know when to use a tourniquet first before you apply it i have here a, a sharpie permanent marker you know after you apply the tourniquet you want to write on the, the patient's um uh, somewhere that uh, somebody the advanced medical team is going to see where you uh i mean how long you put the tourniquet you want to put the time you put the tourniquet on the date you know i'm pretty sure it's gonna be the same day but you want to put the time that you put the tourniquet on probably write it on the person's forehead someplace visible where uh medical team or medical people could see <clears throat> where you put the, the time okay this section here i have the it's kind of i guess a little boo-boo kit i got the antiseptic wipes band-aids i got gauze neosporin duct tape and that's basically it um, I also got here a quick clot sponge so this sponge back here from quick clot uh, it's not like the the combat gauze that you stuff in the wound this has a quick clot agent you just put it as over a wound as a on a as a dressing apply pressure wrap it up and that'll basically help control the bleeding and that's it guys so remember before anything always do a little bit of research what you're putting into your bag you always want to make sure that scene is safe if you like what you see put a like comment say something about what I can do to improve my medical kit again I want to tell you I am not a medic I am not a medic but I, I want to be somewhat prepared and save my co-workers my family my friends and do whatever I can to to help their chances of survival until proper medical personnel arrive on the scene and that's it thanks for watching guys Stay safe.